Hey everyone, welcome back. So you just watched What the Health and you don't know what to do. Well, that's what we're gonna talk about today on The Vegan View. I'm Danny. I'm Nisha. I'm Nicole. I'm Hannah. And this is The, the Vegan, Vegan View. View. Cheers. So What the Health is a documentary right now that's very, very popular. It has had a bunch of celebrities tweeting about going vegan or eating a more plant-based diet. And it is about the healthcare system in America and what we choose to fund and what the government funds and how that has influenced science and research in nutritional sciences. Um, I think something that's kind of different about What the Health versus other documentaries that have been about a plant-based diet, such as like Forks Over Knives or Food Choices, right. is that it kind of digs into almost like the conspiracy Right. of the meat industry and dairy industry, which I think might be why What the Health is, um, you know, catching more people's attention because it's kind of like they feel like they've been lied to almost all this time. But also I feel like that is also why it's getting more backlash because mm -hmm. some people really don't like like conspiracy theories and stuff mm -hmm. like that and are like, oh my gosh, yeah, the government's like lying to us and all that stuff. So I think that might be why it's getting a little bit more attention because it does kind of have that part to it where it talks about like who's funding the heart association and stuff like that and why are they recommending people with heart disease eat steak and right. their healthy recipes mm -hmm. and stuff like that that was like something that what the health talked about that they haven't talked about in a lot of other documentaries that i think might be what's you know making it stand out a little bit more right. so what advice would you have for someone who's just watched what the health and they eat animal product at almost every meal or a few times a week and they're very overwhelmed and feeling a lot of pressure to change their lifestyle. The advice I always give people is to focus on what you're adding to your diet and not what you're taking away. So you're taking meat and cheese out of your diet, right? But you're adding more fruits and vegetables. So I, I know a lot of people I know you went vegan overnight and I think that's so impressive and so cool. Mm -hmm. I did it slowly and I don't think that there's any shame in that. I always encourage people to try and to remember that good is not the enemy of great and every good step that you take is is worth it. Focus on what you're adding. So if you're used to having cereal in the morning, add a handful of raspberries. If you're used to having a sandwich for lunch, have a salad on the side. That way you're increasing bulk and you're adding more fruits and vegetables to your plate. And slowly you're going to start feeling better and that's going to make you want to gravitate towards those foods where you'll slowly start to kind of inch those animal products out. I think the thing that was um, most helpful to me when I first decided to go vegan was YouTube. There's so many vegan YouTubers with so many great food ideas. Mm -hmm. um, so I literally just became like obsessed with vegan YouTube and I like started watching every single video to get ideas of what to eat. And then once you watch people eating vegan, it doesn't seem hard anymore. Once you kind of like indulge yourself in learning about the lifestyle and watching what other people eat, it really doesn't seem that hard. And I think like the best step is to first try to eat a plant-based diet at home because that's easiest. Mm -hmm. You can go to the grocery store and you can control everything that you're making at home. And then when you go out to restaurants, you can, you know, do what you think is easiest. That would be my advice is to start, you know, just getting influenced by a lot of other people on YouTube and you guys can check out our channels, obviously, but we can link some other ones that we really like in the description box mm -hmm. down below because there's so many different ways to eat vegan. Also, you can do like raw, high fruit, high carb, you know, um, high protein even. There's a lot of different ways to eat vegan and just like find what sounds good to you. I would say if you're craving like a cheeseburger, go get a vegan cheeseburger. Mm -hmm. Like don't feel like you have to eat 100% healthy, like whole foods all the time right off the start. Like you're going from a standard American diet, ease yourself into it. Also, I love the YouTubers idea because I, just started watching so many what I eat in a day videos when I first went vegan and I just got ideas from that because I love those videos. I know there's a million of them out there, but still everybody has like their own palette, their own preferences, and you'll take little bits and pieces from each person that you watch and it's really inspiring. So yeah. I would say watch a lot of those and have a ball. Like I love that. Go for it. Especially with what the health, I know a lot of people watch it, come away from it, and don't have veganism as the end goal in mind. 
And I think it's really important for people who think they're never gonna go vegan, mm -hmm. and are gonna go 100% plant-based, that that is okay. I'm all for, I know this might not be a popular opinion, but it's my personal opinion. I think that if you really concentrate on eliminating animal products from your plate slowly, have one meal per day that has a fully plant-based meal. See how you like it. Try to find alternatives for things that you are already familiar with and try to make it a more plant-heavy one. So like, if you love nachos, try to make nachos with more veggies in it, mm -hmm. like avocado and like olives, chives, all these different dressings you can have and focus on adding flavor that doesn't include animal products and slowly dial it back on the cheese. Or try having a hamburger that, I don't know, doesn't have cheese on it. It has a plant-based cheese or a hamburger that doesn't have meat on it and has a plant-based patty. It's really easy to just kind of try to dip your toes into it and see what you like and not push yourself into a box and say, I can't eat any more animal products ever again. You can get so discouraged. I remember right. when I was like plant-based, I was an ethical like vegan at all for a while. I just wanted to go vegan because I like wanted to look good. <laughs> if I tried a vegan product and I hated it, I would just go buy the animal-based product and a new vegan product and try to compare it or I just try to eat more vegetables and learn new recipes. I feel like people do too, especially recently after What the Health has kind of blown up. I've had a lot of friends that have been like, oh, I'm going vegan, I'm doing it, I watched it and I wanna go vegan. And so then they try and they dive headfirst into it like we were saying, mm -hmm. like they just try to go vegan overnight and then they fail because they're, they're hungry or they feel like they're missing out on their favorite foods or whatever it might be. But that's one thing I feel like a lot of people, the, a big mistake people make when they first go vegan is not realizing how much more food you have to eat. Like, you really have to eat double the food. And we're oh, so used, I know. <laughs> it's, it's like the best thing ever. Yeah. And I think that because we're so trained to, like, portion control has been such a thing that's, like, that's always been kind of like, that's how you lose weight, portion yeah. control. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's so ingrained in our minds, but you, like you can't do that on a vegan diet, you'll starve. Like you get to eat way more food, it's the best thing in the world and that's what you have to do. So I think just knowing that like, if you have to go back for seconds or thirds, do it. When you come into the lifestyle, have fun with it. Try new, new restaurants, vegan restaurants in your so area fun. or like, you know, it, I have fun going to restaurants and like, creating my own Me masterpiece, too, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, okay, so they have avocado in this thing, so I know they have avocado. I know they have extra veggies, yeah. potatoes, side of potatoes. Yeah, like I have fun doing that, and so if you kind of embrace it as like, ooh, I get to kind of create my own thing, that's fun. And I used to never really be into cooking, but now I love cooking. Mm -hmm. Also, side note, vegan cooking is way easier. Way yeah. easier. You don't have to like, under keep undercook overcook the yeah. meat you don't have to worry about that which i was always really bad yeah. at cross contamination yeah it's all faster it's so fast so easy so have fun with it and try new things and yeah try all the vegan mock meats that are at the stores because like luckily today they are pretty available at most grocery stores. I mean, I know we live in California, so I think that we're a little bit ahead. Some things are my case weird, yeah. but some things like might satisfy that craving that you have. Yeah. Definitely for me, I used to eat tons of meat and like so many eggs and everything. So I was a very savory, palated person. Mm -hmm. So when I went vegan, I was seeing all these Instagrammers, their smoothie bowls and their huge bowls of oatmeal. And I mean, I ate scrambled eggs every morning and savory meals three times a day. And I was like missing that so much. And then I realized, oh, I just need to start cooking with savory ingredients. Yeah. Salt. Yeah. Tofu yeah. scrambles, avocado yeah. toast. And I remember one day I realized I really want the steak stir fry I used to make all the time. And I was just like, wait, what if I use the spices I used to marinate the steak in on the vegetables and just eat that? And it tasted so similar. Ooh. And then I just, added something for both, like some potatoes, or I added rice in this case, to up the calories, and it was like so good, and I, that's when I was just like, I can do this. This yeah. is manageable and fun. Yeah, you never wanna feel deprived. Like, yeah. it should be the most positive thing. I feel like yeah. it was for a lot of us. Yeah, so. yeah. it was fun, like Jane yeah. said, it was really fun. Part of the movie that I thought was interesting was when they were talking so much about funding, and they were talking about research and how a lot of it is skewed, and I think some of the backlash that the movie got was that um, how do you know that plant-based is yeah. act, is a good thing because if all this information is kind of messed up then how do you know that you're getting the right information so what, do, what would you guys say to that in terms of like feeling overwhelmed by the movie I always say this there's no broccoli administration <laughs> <laughs> it's very clear that eating more plants 
will improve your lifespan and eating less processed foods will always help. Another thing that a lot of people are confused by is because diets like low carb and paleo mm -hmm. that are high in animal products, you do lose weight really fast mm -hmm. on, but losing weight doesn't necessarily mean that you're healthy because, you know, I mean, after you dig into the vegan lifestyle and do a lot of research, you find out about ketosis and all that stuff and how our bodies really do need carbohydrates to function properly mm -hmm. um and so i think that's why i mean i'm still a little confused about it like you know when i'm trying to lose weight and i'm like i need all these plants like why am i not losing weight and just because you know i was skinnier when i was eating like a low carb diet doesn't mean i was healthier you see these beautiful thin models and like great buff men and like we wonder like okay what are they eating it must be why they look like that when in reality it's hard work and that is right. not representative of how healthy you are in the long run. This might be like a little controversial, but my friends that do follow a paleo or like a low carb diet, that's exactly what it is. It's a diet. Mm -hmm. And when they go on what they call like their junk food binges, they really binge. Like they eat all the donuts, all mm -hmm. the burgers, all the bread, like all the rice. And um, that's one thing that I feel like as a vegan, you never feel like yeah. you ever have to like binge eat anything. Like we never, I never feel like I'm missing out on anything. Whereas before when I also was very much into savory foods like meats and eggs and stuff, um, I always felt like a little hungry, always had a craving for something. And I really don't have that anymore. Mm -hmm. Like I'm always satisfied. And so there's, that's something to be said that if, if, you're, if your body is telling you, I want carbs, it, I mean, it's telling you that for a reason. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just like when women are pregnant and they crave things, it's because the baby needs something. Your body's telling you it, so eat what yeah. it's telling you to eat. Side note though, I think that when women are pregnant and they think that they're craving meat, I think that you're just craving like the highest calorie dense thing that mm -hmm. like you can think of. So mm -hmm. like, that's what a lot of people are like, oh, like when I was pregnant, I craved meat. Oh, yeah, I've heard all that the all the time too. I, I used to say that all the time and I've never been pregnant. <laughs> yeah, people tell me that they're like, well, when you get pregnant, it's going to change because mm -hmm. my sister-in-law uh, was vegan and then she craved meat when she was pregnant. And what I, I always say to that is calories. We, yeah. we crave calories because like way back when, if you want to talk paleo, <laughs> way back when we would look to eat a higher calorie foods in order to like last because we were yeah. always in starvation and, and scavenger mindset exactly what i always say to people that say that about meat like i need meat for whatever reason um one of my favorite things that dr gregor said is that there's no nutrient in animal products that you can't get from the plant kingdom. yeah exactly. so when you think you're craving meat you have to think okay what is it that meat has mm -hmm. in it meat is a high source of cal uh, calories like you said of fat a lot of time of iron of protein so it might be that you're not getting enough iron in your diet mm -hmm. so your body is giving you a cue and you're used to getting that from meat you might not know i'm getting iron from meat but your body like registers mm -hmm. that so when you eat it you're getting what you need and so it's giving you a craving mm -hmm. all cravings can be traced you can kind of deduce what your what body is telling you it needs if you know about nutrition and i think the movie did a really good job of talking about that too yeah. because it talked about kind of like why we uh, why certain doctors say that you need certain foods and that they have to be animal products when really That's not necessarily the case. It's about mm -hmm. nutrients at the end of the day when you're thinking about a steak What is a steak? It's a cow. What do cows eat? They take grass and corn and feed and they take the nutrients from grass leafy grains have tons of iron and yeah. calcium in it and they turn that into milk and steak and we eat that and then we get all the hormones mm -hmm. and Cholesterol, like everything like yeah. the lead that that animal it's like eating higher up the food chain you're going to eat everything that animals has put into their body instead of going straight to the source and skipping the middleman and what i thought was really good about the movie too was it talked about how it's not just that it's the animal, like a lot of times people say, well, oh, I'm not eating um, hormone dairy or, or animals that have hormones. Mm. The animal itself has hormones because mm -hmm. it's an animal. It's a, it's a living thing. The mammals don't lactate unless they're pregnant or unless mm -hmm. they've just recently been pregnant. So they're getting a lot of growth hormones and estrogen and things that are meant to make a baby cow into a bigger uh, cow when you're drinking milk and all that stuff is like natural hormones. So there's really no escaping it. I thought the movie did a really good job of kind of like showing you like, wait, what are you actually eating? Yeah, that's yeah. what I love when people are like, oh, I can't eat soy because it has estrogen. I'm mm -hmm. like, do you really don't think that breast milk has estrogen? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're I was gonna say, yeah. eating a cow's 
breast milk. Yeah. You just Instagrammed that recently. Yeah. And and I'll link the post below. Yeah. And and men are always like, oh, I can't eat tofu because the estrogen. And I'm like, but you drink milk? Mm -hmm. Like what? There's a lot of misinformation, and it's mm -hmm. kind of like playing telephone. The information from the source has been filtered and kind of dispersed and watered down so that we're not even given the benefit of the doubt to interpret and learn it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then we are, when we're presented with something like this, it's so controversial because we haven't been given like the honest truth. That reminds me too, the movie did a really good job of saying like certain doctors know about nutrition and certain doctors don't. And yeah. a lot of times in our culture we think, oh, if the doctor said to do it, then we That's should right. do it. And I'm a child of a doctor and my mom's a doctor. doctor. Yeah, I have, I'm never gonna be one of those people who disrespects the medical community at all. They're so no. important and they do of incredible course. work. But I do think that it's important to understand like most doctors don't aren't trained in nutrition. That's not something that they have to study. They're trained to treat disease. And a lot of the preventative stuff is where nutrition is. So unless you're talking to a nutritionist specifically. Well, even, sorry. Yeah, even then. <laughs> even with nutrition and dietetics people, they're trained to work with your diet and your needs in order to encourage you to eat healthier foods. And that can come with their own bias or your own bias. They're there to help you, not to make you eat a certain way. It's kind of against what they do. They can't mm -hmm. just tell you, go vegan, even if they are vegan. That's yeah. not something like a vegan nutritionist would say. They'd say, let's incorporate more healthy fats, more plants, more plant-based proteins, yeah. more veggies, and if you eat meat, they're gonna tell you to eat meat because that's what you believe in. I don't think there's going to be any nutritionist out there that discourages you from eating plants though. So I'm pretty right. sure every exactly. single one is going to be like, <laughs> eat more lettuce, <laughs> eat more broccoli. There's yeah. always, that's always going to be an important part. Yeah. One thing to do, like back to the original question, like you've just watched this documentary, what are you going to do now? Yeah. I think something that's so important and something that I did, I wanted to see the meat eater side as to why veganism might be bad. I wanted to see the veganism side as to why meat eating meat is bad and I I did all the research, like look up our anatomy, look up your intestines and compare that to a carnivore and, and just look up everything, anything that could be a possible question, it will give you the answer that you need. I'm sure you ran into it when I was doing that and I was Googling, cause I did the same thing. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't want to not eat meat and dairy. Yeah. Meats. So I would Google like pro arguments for it. But then I would look cause like I went to school college and I did like a lot of argumentative writing and they would always be like check your sources and where they're coming from otherwise we'll throw out your paper mm -hmm. so I didn't want to throw out the paper that is my life uh, yeah. so I would go and I check the sources of meat eating arguments and some of them were like you have to dig but then you'd find it was like a cattleman's ranch association and I was like ooh, and I couldn't find it barely anything like there would be small studies but they wouldn't be compelling enough for me to be like okay i can still eat this that's a that's a good point and it's I, almost yeah it's so eerie i to look up. think about anything that's like paleo whole 30 whatever it is there's money behind it somebody is promoting this diet selling it trying to sell you a cookbook. trying to sell you a cookbook <laughs> trying to sell like whatever it is there's money behind it Veganism, we don't make any money sitting here telling you to go vegan. Like, the, in, n like all the YouTubers that are vegan, you know, they make money maybe on YouTube, but there's nothing that we like directly get from telling, the telling you that <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, we just do it because it's made our lives so much better and we want to share it with everybody else. And, and you just really have to think about that. Is there money behind this? Is somebody like, is there an organization funding this that is for personal gain? For personal gain? Like, just ask yourself those questions and, and do your own research because sure, documentaries can be one-sided, but if you're doing all your research on your own, you can come to that conclusion on your own and yeah. I think you'll be I think surprised. People are smart enough to make that decision for themselves, mm -hmm. but we aren't given the chance. I'm really happy that like it's reached such a bigger audience yeah. than you know, um, we have had the opportunity to on YouTube because it's on the Netflix like homepage. It's like it's trending. recommended. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's been really awesome to have like people that never knew anything about the vegan lifestyle like text me and be like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I never knew this. This is crazy. Yeah. People are just more open to see it from like an outside source than they are to hear it from like someone they know personally, mm -hmm. I think. I love all the backlash from it. I love that people are getting so angry from someone telling them to eat the vegetables. vegetables. <laughs> Your parents have been telling you that since Forever. Yeah. yeah. I would say when I first, um, like if this was the first documentary that you ever saw about plant-based 
plant-based living. There are so many good ones yes. that are on Netflix also or on YouTube. They're free to watch. So we'll link those in the description box as well mm -hmm. because honestly, I think it was a combination of YouTube and Netflix documentaries that really kind of like helped me make the leap and the more you know the easier it is and mm -hmm. the more you feel like you're doing the right thing so we'll link that for you guys as well have fun with it do your research um i think the more research you do the more you learn and the better you can like convince yourself that you're yeah. doing the right thing and also defend yourself when people question you which i think is really important because people will try to tear you down yeah <laughs> and don't be afraid to eat more plants you'll, you'll be fine <laughs> yeah you will not die. <laughs> Just eat enough calories. So thank you guys so much for watching this episode of The Vegan View. We want to know what you guys thought of the documentary, so let us know in the comments under this video, and we will see you next Monday. Bye! Bye! Bye. Bye.